Joining me exclusively on the exchange is Oliver Betta. He's the CEO of German financial services firm Allianz. Welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you. You're here on a very big, important mission. I want to go carbon neutral by 2050. Is that what you were speaking to the UN about this morning? Yes, we did. In all of these companies, now we saw Amazon doing this. We've heard from the big banks. They're all pushing this climate agenda really forcefully. Is it moving the needle? It will move the needle. It will move the needle. And the Secretary General has done a great job to address uh, industries individually. And he came to us and said, can you do something around the asset owners? Because the asset managers are always the excuse that they can't do anything because of fiduciary duty. But you as insurers and pension funds, you don't have these excuses. So you can make the difference. That's interesting. And speaking of being an asset owner, what's it like? You have negative rates, terribly negative rates in Germany. Is that just destroying your typical business model? No, it's not destroying the business model, but it's certainly challenging it. And it's particularly troublesome because it's not because of markets are doing it. It is what is called financial repression. You think so it's central banks? It's central banks backed up by governments because the primary be beneficiaries are people with a lot of debt and that these days are governments. Right. So we have the European Central Bank pushing it, these rates ever lower, doing more bond buying and frankly buying a lot of the negative yielding debt. Tell us how this all ends. I have no idea. If I knew that, I'd be very rich myself. <laughs> but what we are in the job for is protecting our savers. That's what we're trying to do. And the answer is that we have to develop investment opportunities ourselves. So we're disintermediating and we're going forward, developing particularly illiquid asset classes to secure yield for our savers. Can you give us a couple examples? You know, in the past, before we got in any environment like this, we already saw a lot of people buying almond farms and, you know, all kinds of things that they thought might be exotic ways to get yield in untraditional ways. What are some examples you guys are doing? It's not so different from what other people are doing. The, the way we do it is a bit different. So in the past, we'd go to an investment bank and say, can you create a fund that we can invest in? Today, we do that ourselves. So by disintermediating, we can capture some of the yield for our savers and our shareholders. Wow. So you're basically saying we're not willing to pay other managers to manage our money. It's not, not a great sign for those businesses, is it? Well, we are also one of the world's largest asset managers. It means you have to have real value added. You cannot just intermediate and says, give me 150 basis points. So there has to be an extra risk adjusted return for asset managers. You guys, are, you're Germany based. Yeah, we're headquartered in Munich, but we're a global business. Yes, but right now there's a lot of, of alarm. I mean, the, the numbers that are coming out of the German economy are so weak. Can you tell us what's happening? I mean, is it a technical recession? Is it a full-fledged one? How bad? How severe? And is anything going to be done to try to stop that? Mm. So we're obviously affected by the increasing trade tensions between China and the U.S. So global trade has come not to a halt, but has declined significantly. Last year, we saw 6% lower car sales globally. That's quite significant for a country like Germany. So we're affected hard it's when trade becomes very difficult. And we are typically the early indicators. You're going to see that in other countries as well, like the U.S., so we have to be very careful with what ha happens next. And it's important that central banks cannot help us, really. We really need to see fiscal action to address uh, the, for example, underinvestment in infrastructure that we've seen for many decades. So you really believe that Germany spending more on infrastructure can be the way out of this? Not just Germany, but the world has to do more on infrastructure. Just look around in the U.S. I think there's a few <laughs> things to improve. Which airport did you fly into? Uh, Newark, which is very good, by the way. It is very good. Um, but, yeah, I was going to say, given the traffic uh, with the U.N., you're lucky you made it out here at all today. Um, so you're saying that we've reached the end of what central banking can achieve for these economies. Um, if for the U.S., though, what happens? I mean, are, should we be concerned that negative rates are coming here? And is there anything people can do to prepare for that? I'm not a good forecaster. Our, our colleagues at PIMCO and Newport Beach can do a much better job to do, tell you something about what the central banks do here. But what we are preparing is for a long, long cycle of low interest rates. That's the most important for an asset allocator in making sure our products and services adjust to this environment. So we cannot hope for it to go away. That's the most important investment posture that we can take.